The thing I love, and, and you know, we kind of hit on Jackson, but the thing I love about Baltimore, and another thing we kind of hit on the pregame a little bit, and to me, this is when they're at the best, is the way they played the second half of the game. When they start to play through their run game, that's when they're the most dangerous. And I know it's not sexy, and I think there's a part of them that's still, it's Todd Munkin, it's, it's Lamar Jackson, it's the receivers, we're going to try to throw more. But what I would want to say to Baltimore, John Harbaugh, or any of them, is just go run the ball like you did in the second half of that football game, just another few quarters, and your offense will look exactly the way you want it to. It's gonna, you're going to be able to do whatever you want. But they've gotten a little impatient. That was the one thing that I realized when I kind of did my deep dive on the Ravens over through the week last week. It's just that they do. They continue to uh, try to, I feel like, justify Lamar's contract, OBJ, Zay Flowers, We get this all new that. offense. Right. And, and we yeah. got to show it off. And to me, this is still the best thing they do is when they give the ball the running back and pound your butt with the traditional running game, that's when the Ravens become really dangerous. And I think that's what's going to make them even more dangerous in the pass game if they can just stay consistent in that that department. Well, and they really have something special in Keaton Mitchell oh. and that injury, and I'm sure we're not going to show it, but it was – it was oh. obvious from the get-go yeah. he's done for the year. After the game, John Harbaugh, the head coach of the team, said he's done for the year. Oh. But they hadn't been using it. Like, the guy's incredible. But you can't th – th this gets back to we got one football. At the end of the day, we got one football. We have only so many drives in a game, only so many snaps in a drive. We got Lamar. We got OBJ. We got, you know, and we, get, we can't make it – We just we'd love to, but we just can't. And if you're winning – it keeps guys from chirping. Yeah, that's if right. If you're not winning, you got a problem. Right. Like Odo Beckham Jr. can't say anything about getting targeted. I think when they mentioned it last night, he'd been targeted four times with one catch. He can't say a word. They're winning. Right. If you're not winning, though, that's when you have a problem with guys who aren't getting the ball. But yeah. you have too many guys who need to be fed in that offense. Yeah, they, they got some big-time playmakers. I still think the best way for them to take advantage of that and be who they are and, and be the best they can possibly be as far as the Ravens are concerned is to play still more through the run game. I do. You know, and we'll see where that goes. But either way, we you know we saw Lamar Jackson, who we've kind of been waxing poetically a little bit about his right arm, his pocket play, all of that. Last night was the first time in a while where it was like, no, no, his legs took over the game. His movement was really the key to the football game. I know he still made some big time passes and all of that as well. But yeah, I, I, that that was the first time in a while where it was like you felt like you were watching the Ravens, and this was like Lamar Jackson for two or three years ago. It wasn't just the scramble and the great throw there to Isaiah Likely. You know, they did. They infused a few quarterback design runs in the game, which is another thing that I think they've been a little reluctant to do. And I want to say, you don't have to do it a lot. If you just do it two, three, four times a game, it's going to open up everything else in their offense. All their bread and butter, double pulling, all that kind of plays, you know, it'll stop people from being so over aggressive with it. So we'll see where they go. But Baltimore, I think, as we both know, dangerous as hell, right? That offense, the playmakers they have, like you said, the size of that, that offensive line, you know, the defense we know is, inc I, I think, incredible as far as how it's coached, it's creative. I do worry about this. Their front four can't get to the quarterback. That is going to be an issue. It didn't look bad last night, but Jacksonville's O-line is nothing special. But they still have to create pressure. They have to blitz. They don't like to play man-to-man -man behind it. They want to play zone, right? And you know, that's where they're a little handcuffed on the defensive side of the ball. The defense is very good, there's no doubt, but there's a few things that I that at least concern me with the Ravens on that side of the ball. What's the biggest thing yeah. that would cause them to potentially lose? Let's say they're the one seed, I, they get yeah. the bye, division around game at home. What's the one thing that you're like, yeah, that's what the, that's what should keep John Harbaugh up at night? I, I, I think it's the pass rush. Yeah. Because I think you got you're talking about like you hit on Josh Allen a minute ago, right? Or Mahomes. First off, both of those teams can protect pretty well, right? And those are two quarterbacks that the blitz isn't going to fool them too many times. You're not going to get home on either one of them too many times and be like, oh, gosh, our blitz happened again. So that would scare me because, okay, now we play zone. We rush four. Mahomes and Allen have all day. I don't care how creative your scheme is behind it and the zone coverage. They're going to find somebody open, and that to me is the worry. And then they get frustrated and they go, man, we can't get there with our front four. We got to send five. We got to send six. And now Mahomes is licking his chops or Josh Allen licking their chops going, oh, now 
I got one on one or I got a big void in here over here in the blitz zone. I could take advantage of that. That would be the thing that scares me as far as upsetville for the Ravens. By the way, Lamar Jackson had 171 passing yards and 97 rushing yards, three yards short of what would have been his 16th career. Wow. Double, double triple. Double, That's double something triple, that MDS right. coined and right. tracks. He's got the record already. He's already – Mike yeah. Vick had it before. Right. 15 games in his career, if you include the postseason, where he's got at least 100 receiving – uh, at least 100 passing yards and 100 rushing yards. If you would throw in 100 receiving yards, that Damn, would be a hell of an accomplishment. Special. That would be a hell of a night if right. you could throw that in there too. But passing and rushing yards both for Lamar Jackson and uh, MVP candidate. We, he's kind of on the fringes hanging around. I yeah. know it wasn't as spectacular as right. it was in 2019, but they're the one seed. He's the quarterback. He's the straw that stirs the drink. There will be a significant group of the voters who will just say Lamar Jackson. Yeah, well. Because that's I, the formula. He, he deserves to be in that conversation. And where I do, you know, argue, ooh, excuse me, argue for him, you know, in the case of, let's just say, the Brock Purdy's and the Tua's of the world, where I just go, like you said, there's no doubt who stirs the drink for the, the Baltimore Ravens. You know, we can argue about the 49ers, and that's not disrespect to Brock Purdy. And we can argue, is it is it CMC? Man, Shanahan's awesome. Debo's awesome, right? They got all of that. You know, and I think, Tua, we could kind of have that same conversation. We know this is a Lamar offense. Everything's run through him, right? And that's where, you know, again, what I'm talking about is I still want it to run through him. I just would like to see them run the ball a little bit more and not be in the shotgun, drop back pass so many times. I think that's why in the first half we looked at the game and went, it's kind of, what's going on here, right? I think Jacksonville was playing pass defense for the most part. They were going, we don't think you'll run it. And that's why it was a little underwhelming in the, in the first half. The second half, when they start to run like that, it just opens up the field and it starts to become more fun to watch and they become more explosive. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.